All right, we are good. There we go. Rob Sleemaker, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing, mate? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Brett. Well, thank you. Now, listen, for those that don't know you, you are the CEO and founder of Vasa Trainer, and uh, you, you guys have, have been doing brilliant work in the space of swimming that I know of for many years. So I, I appreciate you doing this. And you're also a partner of my podcast, which is uh, another way that I should thank you. And but but the, the thing that I really wanted to bring you on for today is you're always sending me messages of people I should talk to and, and reasons why I should talk to them. And and for me, you're kind of like a, a thought leader in our space. And I just thought to myself, well, yeah, I could talk to all those people, Rob, but why aren't I talking to you? Because you're <laughs> you're the man with all the, the knowledge. So um it's a pleasure to have you on the on the program today. Well, thanks. Thanks. I happy to connect you with some really great people i've been fortunate to meet over the years yeah there are a lot of good people in swimming and, and triathlon and all those other sports that we connect with now um the the genesis of, of vasa vasa trainer you know um in terms of your background can you give us a little bit of background on where you came from because i know initially you're, you're you're a sports physiologist from what i understand um where did where did the genesis of, of vasa trainer come from the sports physiology side for you thank you yeah that it was a good it's a good question uh, <clears throat> let's see i might have to put my uh when i was a boy <laughs> hat on but um seriously when i when i came to when i moved from from arizona to vermont mm -hmm. I, I was in grad school in tucson at the university of arizona for um, exercise physiology mm -hmm. and i was really fortunate to get a a job at a sports medicine clinic who was also serving the Nordic ski team and biathlon team. And so I, I got embroiled with, with advising and, and coaching elite level Nordic skiers, which was also one of my passionate sports personally. Wow. And anyway, make a long story short, um, this was right around the advent of when um, skating or it's now called freestyle skiing came into vogue because before that it was really just a classical stride skiing, which looks, You've probably seen it like um, it's like walking basically mm -hmm, versus right. skate like inline skating going side to side. And <clears throat> I'll try to give you the Reader's Digest conversion uh, version of this story. But working with the team, I realized that you know, in, in my group of sports medicine people, we kind of figured out that skating required a lot more propulsion from the upper body, from basically from your hip flexors up, whereas the other this classic style of skiing is only like 20% from the upper body. So I designed this machine, which essentially looks like the Vasa trainer, except you're in a standing position, straddling the rail. Mm. And the straps that you pulled on were way up at the front, but they were up higher. They were way above the rail. And basically just did like a double pulling motion. And the, 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 the carriage or the sled would go up the rail. And then you had to use your muscles to lower yourself back down, which worked the eccentric muscles. And I had so much interest from those early models that um, some magazine writer put up, published a, a story about it. And I got a thousand, I'm not kidding you, like a thousand letters in the mail saying, can you send me the plans or where can mm. I buy this machine and blah, blah, blah. So I decided I'd start a business <clears throat> and Vasa was born. And um, <laughs> like many startups, you know, we were talking about small business before. Uh, a lot of problems early on, a lot of delays, <laughs> things like that. And the Nordic ski market wasn't as big as I thought. Fortunately, <laughs> I designed it so you could also convert it over for swimming. So you could have a padded bench that you lay down on. And it's it's essentially the same principle. You're pulling your body weight up an incline and then you lower back down. Um, so I put the, you know, I put swim paddles on the straps and I changed the seating arrangement so you could have a bench and then I took it to, um, sales weren't great for the Nordic side. So I took it to the ASCA World Clinic in 1990. I think it was in Pittsburgh. And mm. that's where, you know, I had no idea what was going to happen. I, I really knew very little about swimming. I knew a little bit from triathlon, but, you know, that, uh, that was it. And <clears throat> we had a booth there, Richard Quick, Richard Schulberg, mm. and North Thornton, you know, three mm. legend, legendary coaches. Yeah came to our booth. I, I didn't know them from Adam and they just started going crazy over it. 
and they each ordered multiple machines. And you know, then I realized like, okay, I'm onto something here. And I remember talking to the people in, you know, in charge of ASCA and we, we worked out a little arrangement to give ASCA members a discount and that helped to jumpstart the marketing. And the rest is history uh, in terms of how we got started. So that's interesting, a re really cool story. And in, in that respect, I had a question for the, the Nordic side. Why, why did you initially feel like there was a need for that in terms of the, the physiology? Was, was it just because you could train when there wasn't snow, let's say? You could, you could do it at any time? Is that kind of the, the genesis behind the idea? Well, actually, I mean, that that's certainly true. And because actually training for Nordic skiing can be in the summertime or off mm. of snow can actually right. be very dangerous. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's hard on the body. Um, depends on what you're doing. But anyway, the, that was part of it. But really, the main thrust of it was we did, we were working with um, a, a guy on our sports medicine team was a biomechanist named Ned Frederick. And mm. he figured out that the propulsive forces in skate skiing or freestyle skiing were far greater from the upper body, from the hip flexors up right. than they were for classic skiing. So we said, we've got to train better. And we, and we studied what the Germans were doing, the, the West Germans who were dominating biathlon at the time. And we were looking at what, and even the Russians and what they were doing. And we noticed that just their physiques, their upper bodies had mm. been developed way more than, than our guys. And so I just had this idea. I don't know how it came to me, but I just had this idea to develop a machine. I think I was looking, actually looking at the the seat carriage on a rowing machine and the right. way that it rolled on that rail. And I'm like, what if we did something like that? And, you know, and anyway, that's how it came to be. <laughs> but what it was, was really the, to what, develop what, the upper body for skiing. Yeah. What about the first build then? Do you remember the first build? Where was the first builds taking place? Because I'd imagine you'd have to kind of figure out to get equipment and then how to put it together and then make it functional. What, where did, where was that going on? Yeah, well, there was, <laughs> it was, uh, I was a bachelor living in a log cabin in Vermont and um, <laughs> I, I was fortunate to know some good people, mechanical engineers and things like that. And um, we, we, we drew them out literally on, draft paper like this one engineer was really good with with mechanical drawing drafting and i hope you still got those dra a, early drawings do you but i have them but not right here right not oh, right yeah, in front yeah. of me but you but you still got the early drawings i hope oh yeah, yeah. in fact okay. uh, oh they're right here oh they are wow okay you oh, can wow. see that you'll be able to see this on the screen it says mm -hmm. 1998 Vasa wow. original drawings oh, look at that there we go now that stuff's worth some money right there <laughs> Yeah. Well, that the drawings of the Nordic, the Nordic one, and then I think we had drawn the um, the swim bench as a as basically it was an afterthought. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd imagine. You, you know, how did it go from the the Nordic swim? Uh, you know, what what were you calling it? Was well, it we swim, called the, the original was just the Vasa Nordic trainer, and then we switched it to the Vasa, Vasa swim trainer. What, what does Vasa mean? Where did that come from? So that's a funny story too, but. Um, in Sweden, there's a there's a famous um, Nordic ski race. It's a 90 kilometer ski race that goes from Mora to Salen, uh, Sweden, and they call it the Vasa Loppet, and which Loppet means like marathon. And um, I was really into Nordic skiing back in those days, and I was reading about these different races. There's also one in North America called the North American Vasa. I just like the way it sounded, and then mm. I looked at the I looked up what it stood for. And in Sweden, like in the 1500s, this guy named Gustav Vasa, who was mm -hmm. a nobleman, he, the, the Danes were invading Sweden. And so he got all these warriors to ski with him. And they skied this 90 kilometer distance to fight the Danes. They won and they beat, um, and they made him the king. They made Gustav Vasa the king. And like mm. his family ruled for about four or five generations. Anyway, to me, it stood for like strength and endurance and perseverance, courage. So I, that's why I adopted the name. I love it. Okay. Well, that's good. Cause I always wondered about that. It's like, it's a cool name, but where did it come from? But it's a, it's a King's name. I like that. Thank you. Right. Well, you know, it's funny in, in, in German, the W A S A is pronounced like a V Vasa. Okay. But it, it means water. Oh, so wow. it's all coincidental that we yeah. ended up making a swim trainer. 
That is wild. That, that, that's exceptional. So then how does it go from what it is with the Nordic side to laying down onto a bench on the swimming side and then Richard Quick coming along and saying, I love this thing? How did, how did that happen? It was really just by accident. I mean, I, I knew that we, I mean, it was by necessity, really. Um, the, the Nordic ski trainer was selling, but it wasn't, wasn't doing well. And uh, we, because we were really late to the market, it was already November by the time we actually could start shipping product. So most Nordic skiers were already on snow. And I was thinking like, and I didn't really know that much about business. I was learning quickly uh, through all my mistakes. And so I just, I said, man, I'm going to have to try a different market and see how it goes. And, you know, I was researching, you know, I developed it for swimming as well. So I said, well, let's see what we can do in the swimming market. And I figured, well, if swim coaches like it, then that, that's going to mean a lot. So that's why we went to that, that original ASCA right. conference. That's and we, we got lucky, just lucky, really, pure luck. I think there's a little bit of that in, in, in all people, successful people, successful businesses. There's, it feels like there's an element of luck, but there's also an element of, of genius and hard work and perseverance and, and meeting the right people and doing the right thing, but, but making mistakes, like you said. So how, how does one take an idea looking back now and if someone's out there listening to this there's some there's some really brilliant young smart people listening to this right now so how do you take an idea like you had um start to kind of build it out um create a business how do you how do you initially create a business and then beyond that i guess how do then you you make something successful over a longer period of time i know that's a very big broad topic but maybe right. just take it from the idea first of all yeah, sure, sure. Well, I, I, um, I, I sort of did what you would call ready, fire, aim. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of like, you know, preparing, I, I did do a lot of preparation and everything, but it was really ready, fire, aim. We just did it. And a leap of faith I, almost, like just go for it. Yeah. And, and learn along the way. But, but right. if I were advising someone, and I am advising now someone, I would say, you know, an idea, especially a product idea or mm -hmm. software idea or whatever, um, it can be the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, if you are, if, if you're trying to make it into a business, a functioning business, that's a game that has its own rules. And I, I, I liken it. I played soccer in high school and college. And so I, I say like, okay, let's think of a soccer team mm -hmm. and you got 11 players on a side and those those 11 players on the pitch each have a job to do there's a little crossover with them you know cross training and stuff like that but they've each got a pretty much an assignment and in small business as you grow um if you're one person you're pretty much playing all those positions which mm. is not sustainable so you've got to be able to figure out um either how to subcontract certain positions like your bookkeeper your accounting your legal side of things which you have no business learning that stuff anyway unless you're like unless you're a genius and you already got it mm -hmm. you know so you have to learn the rules of business the, the the rules of that game don't take it personally if it doesn't go quite right um just learn from it and adjust um there's a really great expression that we use um and i learned it from someone else it's not original but it's called fail fast fail cheap and then iterate so you take your original idea, figure mm -hmm. out a way to make it. I'm going to just use like a physical product, say a new swim paddle or something like that. Right. Figure out a way to make it as inexpensively as possible, as quickly as possible. Test it. Learn from what worked and what didn't work. Go back and make an iteration and keep doing that over and over and over again. Trying to spend as little money and effort as possible. Well, maybe not effort, but as money, little money as possible. Um, learn as quickly as you can until you get it to the point where you say like, yeah, this could go to the market. Right. So I don't know if that answers all of your question, but no, um, good. yeah, brilliant. Actually. Yeah. I think, I think it's great knowledge that you're sharing right there. Vasa has been the go-to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmers catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to vasatrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout 
and get 10% off anything from Vasa. Well, what about any any mistakes looking back that you that you think oh that that that's a classic mistake that kind of we all make that you certainly wouldn't make again? Is there anything that stands out? Sure. Um well, I'll use a, a, a couple of examples. But when I first started the company, um, everything was in print back in those days. We didn't have the internet. So the instruction manual for the Nordic trainer, um, it only brushed on the swimming in that. But so when I went to, when I took the file to the printer, uh, he goes, well, you know, if you only print 100 of these, it'll cost you, uh, you know, like 10 bucks each or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But if you print a thousand of these, you'll get that piece cost down, you know, like in half. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, well, I could spend a thousand dollars to get a hundred, or I could, you know, spend the five thousand and get a <laughs> thousand, or whatever it was, whatever it worked yeah, out to be. Yeah. But the funny thing about it was, six months into the business, because I sw had switched over to swimming, that manual was fairly obsolete. Mm -hmm. So I ended up throwing away probably <laughs> half of them. So that's money down the drain. The other right. one would be injection molding. It's very expensive and you have to hire, we have to hire, um, you know, design engineers that know how to use the CAD software and basically deliver the file to the tool maker who can, you know, cut the tool and get it ready for injection molding. So that's an example of, um, well, like a good carpenter would say, measure three times, cut once. So right. you want to be damn sure that what you're about to make um, and spend tens of thousands of dollars on is going to last a long time. You're going to be using that part, that design for a long time, because otherwise you will have pissed away a lot of money. Right. Yeah. Good advice. I like those two things. All right. Well, the, the product itself or the products... Uh, are, are you know come a long way in in those years now so where are we now with Vasa trainer what what are the, the the top sellers what are the things that you kind of hang your hat on what are the, the 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 uses and benefits of those why why are people buying the Vasa trainer right great questions um so we have basically we have three different types of of if you want to put them in the category of swim bench training mm -hmm. machines or dry land mm -hmm. swim training machines so we have the the original Vasa trainer, which has gone through a lot of iterations. It's the the recent most recent iteration. I I feel pretty proud of it's it's highly functional, very versatile, um, lasts forever. I mean, God, we have customers that still are using their original machines thirty years later. Mm. Um, but you can do, you know, with the trainer and the swim and the swim ergometer is the other one, and then we have a, a folding bench that you use with swim cords. All of them have similar benefits, but they work differently and depends on the needs. But if you're just doing swim specific um, strength training or working on technique or whatever, each one of them works in a slightly different way, but they have some similarities in that um, you're laying on a padded bench, you're pulling on a resistance device mm -hmm. uh, or res a form of resistance. You know, with the trainer, it's it's a percentage of your body weight that you pull up and down the incline. Or if you're using the pulley system of the trainer, then you're really just doing a, you know, sort of a continuous freestyle where the cord goes through the pulleys. Mm -hmm. um, and then the trainer also has, you know, I mean, a wide range of resistance. You can increase the incline. You can add our uh, stretch cord power cords. They're like rubber rubber tubing. You can use the pulley system, which is it cuts the load or resistance in half at any incline because of the mechanical advantage of pulleys, or you can pull on the, um, the fixed webbing straps. And then you're, you're basically, it's like doing a pull up except at a slight incline. So lots of versatility. It has a leg power platform. So you can do leg, leg push offs and squats and lunges and things like that. Mm. The swimming ergometer, the swimmer is a, is a very sophisticated, um, think of it like a rowing machine for swimming. You're, uh, when you pull on the cords, it makes uh, an air break or a fan wheel go around. Right. That's the air resistance and it's got seven different resistance settings. But most importantly is it has a very precise measurement of power and right and left side power. So when you're swimming along, 
the power meter is recording your elapsed time, your elapsed distance, strokes per or, uh, stroke rate, um, uh, pace per hundred meter, and watts or power. Mm. And then you can you can toggle the the buttons on it to get different outputs and and stuff like that. Um, great for doing time trials where you can preset the distance and just crank away until the distance counts down to zero and then you record your time and your power and you can do very repeatable workouts so that it's apples to apples comparison so if you had you know if you were doing a, a time trial 400 meter time trial on your swim erg and i was doing one here we could compare notes and you know it's 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 basically apples to apples comparison yeah. um wow. or like if you do your own workouts from one month to the next you you can measure your progress and see how mm. you do it. Right. Um, yeah. A lot of coaches use both. I mean, both the trainer and the erg. You're laying on a bench. There's a monorail that is you know spans two stanchions. So a lot of coaches really like doing um, swim technique. That that's why I think Richard Quick and North Thornton and Schulberg really liked it the most mm -hmm. was for the technique things. I mean, I'm, I'll never forget Richard Quick talking about how he had been teaching this idea, I'm sure you've heard of it before, that he wanted the swimmer in the water to imagine that there was a ladder underneath them and that as they reached forward, mm -hmm. and got it, you know, got themselves into that catch yeah. position that the heel of their hand or, or the palm of their hand was grabbing a ladder rung mm. and then they'd pull their body past that point. He said, that's when people feel and, and understand that they're getting a really great grip and catch on the water and then they just right. rip from there you know, to access their lats and their torso. So uh, that's one of the reasons he liked it for physical training as well as for, you know, teaching the technique. Because also with the monorail, you know, you, you can see what your arms are doing. So if you're crossing midline, you really can see that and right. make yeah. directions for that. So, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really caught on. Um, how... I've I've seen I was I was thinking as you were talking there like I I bought a rowing machine a couple of years back and and I was actually pulling on on water of some sort. H have you guys thought about that with the with the Vasa trainer of like having some sort of water function where you can pull on water? Right. What, so what you're talking about is uh, is the resistance device in a probably yeah. a water rower. Water rower. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, our 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 friends over in which are kind of the next town over our concept too. And they make the, the I think the best rowing machines in the world. Mm -hmm. They use an air fan like we do. In fact, right. I we're kind of like a little brother company to them. And, and I learned from them that um, pulling on air, it feels quite realistic. Mm. Um, but I know that pulling, I've rowed, rowed on those water rowers before. They're very good. They feel good. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, long way to answer your question is, we chose to use air resistance instead of the water, mostly because I don't think we felt like there was a huge difference between the, the feeling that you got and mechanically putting together the, the type that we have, it's 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 simpler and, and it's right. better. I think the, the water introduces some other issues. Right, gotcha. We now, now as, as, as a physiologist by, by background, by nature, uh, do you also with Vasa, I, I imagine you provide workouts for people so that it's not just the machine itself. Now they're, they're, they're getting something where they can, like you said, track it and keep themselves uh, active and honest on the, on the trainers themselves. So it comes with programming. Well, we do, yeah, we do have, um, you know, quite a few workouts that are available to people, but you know, I kind of, um, I took the stance years ago, even though we're changing it a little bit right now, like working with people like Dan Daly, but that we we were a hardware company and not a software company. And so we we did our best to provide um, enough workouts and enough um, information for, you know, people probably smarter than us on the on the training and workout side of things mm -hmm. to create workouts. Um, using our products and that that has happened over the years and then um yeah i've i've put my own um two cents in there as far as uh creating workouts that uh are effective for right. for swimmers for triathletes um i i would probably find myself being stronger in the um 
and we've kind of emphasized this, but in more of an open water swimming kind of training for triathlon right. and open water yeah. swimming and yeah. less for competitive pool swimmers. I, I'd like to leave that to experts like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, have you seen, you know, people using your product like a Dan Daly who loves the product and, and uses it uh, every day. So have you seen people like that use the product in a way where it's caught you by surprise in a way of like, Oh, wow. I'm so glad to see people using it that way. I hadn't thought of it that way or anything like that. Has that been, has there been some surprises? Yeah, there, there have been. And, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of a couple of good ones. Uh, well, this is kind of an, a weird story, but you, about, about 20 years ago, my sister told me that she had a dream that, I was going to be creating a machine <laughs> that people with physical disabilities were going to, you know, mm. really benefit from. Right. So then fast forward about uh, another five or six years. And that's when I developed the swim ergometer. And now fast forward to today. And it's surprising how many um, para swimmers and para triathletes there are that are using yes. the swimmer. Yes. Um, in, in, um, you know, able-bodied, or uh, sports, swimming, triathlon, surfing, things like that. Um, there have been some interesting surprises. Well, you're a surfer, so this is a really good one. In 1995, Sam George, who was the editor of Surfer Magazine at the time, had discovered the Vasa trainer. And apparently he called um, called us and he spoke to my marketing director and she, did, she made an arrangement to loan him uh, a Vasa trainer. So we didn't really think about it. And eight months later, you know, we hadn't heard from him. We didn't really know what was going on. And the phone started ringing off the hook mm. because he had written this surf tip article for Surfer. And um, the reason he got it is because he had injured his Achilles tendon. And he couldn't go in the water for six months or eight months. And he just trained religiously on the Vasa trainer and had incredible results. That's and cool. um, uh, But anyway, he wrote that surf tip article <laughs> I mean, oh my God, thanks to Sam George, we, we probably sold a thousand uh, <laughs> Vasa trainers that year from just from him. That's awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, that was a funny story, but I think the ones that mean the most to me are when, uh, I mean, I love it when elite level athletes yeah. benefit from it. Uh, right. You know, like I, saw, I happened to see Lucy Charles, she, she posted mm. a video recently of She's got a bad injury with her a fracture in her hip, I think. Hip, yeah, her hip. You yeah. know, and um, you know, she's got one of our swimmers that they bought it on their own. We didn't even know that they had it, but they they've got it in their training studio. And wow, you know, she she's training on it, just cranking away. I I think someone needs to talk to her about some technique. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> those triathletes just go, man. They go. Well, she's one of the fastest swimmers in the sport. Yeah. I mean, she yeah, is yeah. the fastest female. Yeah, swimmer. yeah, yeah. But um, she, she is. That's yeah. really cool. Well, look, what about this? Where do people find it? I mean, it's it's vasatrainer.com, right? That's, is that the simplest way? That's it. It's it's v a s a trainer.com, vasatrainer.com. That's the best way. Yeah. You okay. Got it. And they can use uh, my discount, right? Brett, they just put a Brett in and get a discount. Please do. Yeah, they'll get their, they'll get a ten percent discount. Awesome. And uh, that's a great great thing that you're passing along to people. Yeah, very cool. And uh, what about you? you I can imagine you're kind of everywhere, fa Facebook, Instagram, those sorts, sorts of places. Yeah, uh, we've got a strong presence on Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook. We, our YouTube channel is very big. If, if people are looking for some um, excellent instructional videos, just go right. to the Vasa Trainer YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and our website, we have a video um, section on our website. Cool. Where are you, where are you guys based now? So we're in, uh, we're just outside of Burlington, Vermont, mm. which is not the hot spot for uh, swimming. But no. as I said, the origins mm. of the company were Nordic skiing, and it is a hot spot for Nordic skiing. <laughs> Do you have plans to venture off into other sports again like that? Well, um, yes, we, I, I don't know if I would, I, I think some other sports are going to find us because of what, of some of the new developments that we're working on. Um, we've, and then also the, um, current markets in, of you know, competitive swimming, open water swimming, surfing, triathlon, uh, and coaching, of course, we've got a new power meter that we're coming out with in a, mm. about a month or so. Great. And it's, 
it, it transmits um, the data with Ant Plus technology and Bluetooth low energy. So people are going to be able to use some apps that are outstanding. And, you know, as a, as a coach, I think you'll appreciate this one app where um, you'll be able to actually see the right and left power. Like, let's say you're looking down at your uh, iPad underneath yeah. you in the ERG. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to see in a graphic representation, um, right and left power against wow. a target power that you want to achieve. So you wow. might see like a tachometers, you know, right and left tachometers, mm -hmm. or or it'll be um, a, like a bar, you know, the bar graphs going up and down. Right. Yeah. And so you get this instant biofeedback as to whether you're holding a, a right left mm -hmm. balance. But mm -hmm. even more importantly, what happens to your power when you fatigue? Right. You can't see that in the water, but you can see it on the swim erg and it's wow. very powerful. Yeah. That's so, very cool technology. And and when's that coming out? Uh that's going to be in production in about a month. Okay, great. Awesome. So, oh, we'll watch out for that. That's cool. I like that. Um well, listen, Rob, I appreciate this today. This has been great to get to know you and your business even more. You guys are doing in, incredible work in the in the swimming triathlon community. So um, thanks for all you do. I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Thank you, Brett. And uh, I, I'd like to have more surfers find out about us. So if you know anybody. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I, I'm working the surfing angle for any question right now. We're trying to build out a surfing um, right. a surfing channel on any question. And, and we're, we're headed that way. So I'm actually in contact with a bunch of surfers. So actually, I know someone, Dr. Tim Brown. I'm going to put you in contact with Dr. Tim Brown. Oh, I think I, he, we've already you know been him? in contact. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, he and he knows about the Vasa trainer from many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's brilliant. But I Ian love Walsh that too. I, I want to make sure you connect with Ian Walsh. Ian Walsh. Okay, I'll I'll get on that. So, well, I appreciate. it. Well, this is cool. Yeah. Um. Let's let's keep growing and expanding and getting the Vasa trainers out to people. So it is worldwide, by the way. People can people can order these and get them sent anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Right. And we also have a very strong dealer in um, Germany for, for Europe. It's Sportima. So they can, if, if someone right. in Europe is listening to this, they can go through Sportima or direct from us too. Awesome. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate this. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Be well. We individualize training in the pool. So why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Barney of Barney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body. Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net.